Is it possible for a murderer to have a conscience? On July 2nd, 2017, police in Danville, Arkansas received a call from Mark Watts. Mark Watts told police that a woman named Phyllis Chambers had called him to come over to her home to help move some items. According to Mark Watts, when he arrived at the Chambers home, the door was partially open, so he went inside. When he walked inside, he found that Phyllis Chambers was sitting in a chair and she was deceased. She had blood all over her. And then he walked through the home to the bedroom of Phyllis's sister, Martha Vesey, and Martha was also deceased. Mark Watts did make a point of telling police that he had blood on his hands because he touched Phyllis in order to check for a pulse. The medical examiner ruled that the death for both women was caused by blunt force trauma. Uh, Phyllis Chambers was struck four times with a blunt object and her sister Martha Vesey was struck five times. It wasn't until three weeks later that police sat down with Mark Watts at the police department to interview him. During that interview, Mark Watts did confess that he was responsible for the death of Phyllis Chambers and Martha Vesey. According to Mark, he went to the home and while at the home, Phyllis Chambers started questioning him and got upset about money that Mark owed to Phyllis. So he got a shop hammer and he started striking Phyllis, then went to the bedroom and struck her sister, Martha. According to Mark, he threw the murder weapon in or near a pond and he left the residence. But he says he started feeling bad, so he went back to the home and called 911. Mark Watts was arrested and charged with two counts of murder in the first degree. In 2019, Mark Watts was convicted at a jury trial of second degree murder and he was sentenced to 30 years in the Arkansas Department of Corrections. The sentence that Mark Watts received was the maximum sentence available for a second degree murder charge. Mark Watts is scheduled to come up for parole in 2026. Mark Watts has appealed his conviction, but his conviction was upheld. I did find it interesting that on his appeal, he did say that even with a confession, because Mark Watts did confess, the state has to provide evidence of that person being responsible for the homicide. The state did not provide that evidence because the state never found the murder weapon. But the appellate court disagreed because they said that the state did prove their case because the uh, confession that Mark Watts gave matched the crime itself.